Also, don't applaud for us because we only have a minute. And so we don't want to take time for your applause, all right, if you feel you compelled go. to applaud, all right? <laughs> what do I like best about Awana? It's five words. That was an Awana verse. When, I, when, when my kids started taking Awana, I just thought, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, you know, it's a program at church. You know, they got Sunday school, they got Awana. But it wasn't until they got older that I really began to realize how powerful Awana was. Whenever they entered those teenage years, whenever they were preteens, whenever they went to college, and they would make a biblical decision, or I could see that they were developing a biblical world view. And, and, and I'd say, so where'd you get that? they say, and they'd quote, quote a scripture. I'd say, where'd you get that scripture? That was an Awana verse. That was an Awana verse. And I realized that, that whenever they were cubbies and whenever they were sparkies and whenever they were TNTers, they were developing a biblical foundation that would take them through the tough teen years, that would take them through the tough college years, and even now as young adults and establishing their careers, they're building their careers on, that was an Awana verse. Uh, my favorite thing is when unchurched kids come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I'll tell you about two. Um, this year I asked Mackenzie, I said, what do you want for Christmas? And she says, I want Jesus in my heart. And I says, I think we can take care of that today. Um, another one um, was uh, mom came up to me. I want to ask something to say. I want to ask something to tell you. I, I, so I found her, and she said, I've come to um, know Jesus Christ is my personal say. I said, do you, do you have Jesus boss in your life? And she said, yes. So thank you for serving in Awana. My favorite part of Awana is Puggles because we are just learning how to talk, and I think it is super awesome that we can pour into these children that God made everything. You know, they may not be able to say many words, but you can know that they're going to say, God made everything, and thank you. We've been Awana, an Awana church now for, this will be our 15th year, and Awana gives us um, fantastic material to help children learn about God and to grow in Christ and children are being saved uh, we have four kids of our own in the program and we're just uh, blessed that they're able to uh, memorize the verses uh, and like was mentioned earlier they'll be able to draw on those later in life so Awana you're doing a great job thank you for all you're doing good morning um, I want to talk more about personally what Awana has done for my, my family and I get emotional when you talk about your family and your kids, but Awana has changed eternity for my family. Both of my children were saved because of Awana. And my daughter of all nights was saved on awards night. <laughs> she, um, but Awana has taught us to present the gospel every time in awards night. The gospel is presented and my daughter accepted Christ that night. So that's very important to me. And my son, of course, was saved as a result of Awana. On the way home one night after church, he was just asking questions and I looked at it my husband is that I said I think I need to talk to him so after church in his room of course I talked to him and he prayed to receive Christ so Awana has really changed my family for eternity and I hope that through one I have um, gained the confidence and the knowledge to share the gospel to, to children and, and I grew up in church but as I've heard another missionary JJ so it was 30 I was 30 something years old before I led a child to Christ and so Awana has really equip me with that and I appreciate that and I thank you all for your work that you do because Awana is a life changing program. I'm a TNT director but my favorite part of Awana is Sparks. Um, my daughter was saved um, in kindergarten Sparks through the rank path. Her best friend led her through and then one of my best friends got to pray with her and she knew what she she knew what she needed to know because of sparks and I thank you for that. Thank you. As a young child I went through the Iwana program and loved it. So that was one of the main reasons I had my kids get involved in Iwana. And with them getting involved, they have learned their scriptures. Um, they really enjoy it. They look forward to going every Wednesday night. Um, and the result, uh, my daughter was saved one Wednesday night. And um, I just can't express how much that really meant to me, uh, knowing that she was a part of this program uh, and she came to know Christ. Uh, it's just a blessing. Thank you for all you do.
Awana means so much to me. It has allowed me to share Christ with little children and then branch out on out to share Christ with parents, to connect with them, to figure out their needs, and to be able to minister to them. It's just wonderful to watch the Holy Spirit deal with these children, sometimes six months before they actually get saved. So it's just an awesome thing for them to say, you know, Miss Nancy, I asked ask Jesus into my heart. It just touches my heart and gives me such a blessing. Thank you. I'm the director over Sparks, the kindergarten, first and second grade. And I just want to tell you and thank you for how well organized your programs are. I go into a kindergarten class one night, and the kindergartner kids, I don't have to tell you, are pretty wild. We're about to dismiss. And I've got a teacher that's sitting in the corner with the little child. And I thought, okay, he's been in trouble. I go on and do what I need to do and go down the hall. Well, when I go back downstairs, some of the others come up to me and said, you had one saved tonight in your kindergarten class. And I'm going, who, where? And Miss Helen had led this little boy in class to Christ. And I just want to tell you and thank y'all for what all you do and the new programs coming out. Thank you. I'm the Puggles and Cubbies director at our church, and I've been nervous about <laughs> talking up here because I, I didn't have a big fabulous story about how a child has come to be saved in our program um, during Cubby's night. Um, so I have been thinking this week about what to say, um, and I just want to encourage everybody. Um, I've been reminded about how each Awana club is like the body of Christ, and although I have not personally led a child to Christ in Cubby's or Puggles, um, I have seen the um, how they have come to know Christ, um, either in Sparks or later on. And so um, I just want to encourage everybody that it doesn't matter what part you play, um, it's important. And um, just having the children have that foundation early on is going to help them more than um, someone not learning that until they're older in life. So thank you for helping me realize how important my part is, even though I don't have a big fabulous story to share. Uh, four years ago, uh, our secretary asked me to teach third and fourth uh, grade Awana. And I kind of half-heartedly agreed because I still had a lot of bitterness from my previous church experience, and I didn't really want to do it, but I saw the need. And I immediately realized that um, I was getting way more out of those lessons than those kids ever would. And a few months into Awana, we had a lesson on forgiveness. And... I thought, tried to think of every possible way to get out of that. I thought, oh, I'm just going to call and tell her I'm sick this week or something or find somebody else to teach because I can't do this lesson. Um, but every day that week, when I got in the car to take my kids anywhere or go anywhere, there was a song on the radio by Matthew West called Forgiveness. And the words, so a phrase in there says, even though the jury and the judge say you've got a right to hold a grudge, there's a whisper in your ear saying set it free. And I thought, okay, obviously I'm supposed to teach this lesson. So I went in, the kids are in game time, I went up to the room, and I got on my knees and prayed. And I thought, Lord, I cannot teach this lesson unless you can teach it to me first. Because I can't teach these kids to forgive other people if I can't be forgiving. And I, could, I knew that I just wouldn't be able to do that. And they came in, and I told them, I said, this is the hardest lesson I've ever taught because it's a lesson I need to learn. And through all of that, I was able to really experience what forgiveness really is. And afterwards, I realized that every lesson I teach has to be real to me before it can be real to them. And um, I just want to thank you for the way you write the curriculum, the way you write the lessons, because it's speaking to way more than just the kids. And that has made a huge impact on me. Thank you. Remember, I'm Brian Crow. I like to mix things up. For those that don't know me, that's what I do. That's my spiritual gift, confusion. Yes. Okay? <laughs> I happened to be at their church 
When? May. It was April. Ma April. 2015. May, April. Okay. <laughs> and and I said, June, I want you to in one minute tell about the night of the baptisms. Tell us about that. Okay. Um. Two years ago, when we started our Awana program, it was a few weeks beforehand, we realized that we needed to be really prepared. If, if we wanted to see a harvest, that we needed to be prepared for that harvest and do whatever we could to be ready um, to disciple those kids as they came to know the Lord. And uh, within the following months, we saw 37 children accept Christ, their Savior. And it was... I wish I had time to stand here and tell you every story because it's amazing. But um, a lot of those children were uh, children from our bus ministry and could not attend church on Sunday morning and really wanted to be baptized. So we planned a baptismal service on a Wednesday night, and our pastor actually made it a church-wide celebration in our sanctuary. And we got to witness 27 of those children be baptized. And we got to share their personal testimonies with our entire church family. And that, I will never forget that night. Um, Brian was able to be a part of that. And um, it just reminded me why we do what we do. And um, that even when, when we are at our worst and feel like we can't do anything right, those were the nights that God worked the most because we didn't have much else to give and we had to completely rely on him. So I'm just, it was an incredible year. Seven years ago, my husband and I, along with another couple at our church, were invited to come to Commander College 101 in Savannah, Georgia. And at the time, we were very overwhelmed and just very frustrated as leaders. Um, but Commander College 101, you learn about vision, and you learn about making a vision statement. And as we started to wrestle with pinning down that vision statement, we realized the truth, that our club was really glorified babysitting at the time. And that's where the frustration came from. So we saw that weekend, we saw the heart of Awana through the people that were there. And that was a turning point in our ministry. It was huge for us. And we went home with a purpose. And that purpose was that we were going to share the gospel every week. And that's when that started at our club. And honestly, when we got home, we had leaders who quit. Uh, they did not want to be a part of that. And, but we also had a large number of leaders who were so relieved to finally have a vision, to have a purpose. And it's not been an easy road, but it's been worth it. And I just want to thank you for all the sacrifices that you've made to make sure that Awana stays focused on the gospel. It has certainly made a difference in our club. It's made a difference in my family. Uh, I, along with others, all three of my children were saved as a result of Awana. And a simple thank you is not enough for that, but thank you. Here I go again. Beth came running up to me and said, I've got to tell you about what's happening on Monday nights in the street. Can you give us a minute about Monday nights in the street? Sure. Um, our church wanted to really do some outreach, and we just wanted to look and find children. And we didn't realize uh, the depravity that was around our church until we went looking. And we decided to take Awana to the streets. Um, it was really something that was sparked at Commander College, Commander 301. And um, we go out into a local community, right into our local community, and we do what's called a one in the streets. And we have the children, um, we go out and knock on doors, and we have a tent set up. We usually provide some type of food, and we do a very basic uh, lesson, and we play games with them. And we really make the connections and hopefully, you know, build relationships with those families so we can bring them into the church. But... Um, we're going out and getting them and hopefully giving them, you know, what they need, the word of God. I have so many favorite Awana moments and memories, but one of them happens faithfully every fall, and it happens at the AMC conference. Um, Randy and I are blessed to be able to lead some workshops at the conferences, and the, the workshop I love the most is the one where I'm able to share ideas that God has given us that has blessed our club that we've been able to use successfully. And I love looking across the room and watching those aha moments happening around the room as some leader or group of leaders realizes that 
we can do this. There's the solution to our problem. There's an idea. And um, at the end of the class, I especially love seeing that person who walked in kind of bored, maybe even stifling a yawn. They are now, do not want to leave my room. They are over in the corner in an impromptu leader meeting, figuring out how are we going to use this idea to make our club better. So I just wanted to say thank you for what you do to make the conferences, the fall conferences possible. They really do make a difference in the, in the lives of those of us that are working out in the field. Thank you. My most recent favorite Awana memory is uh, from last fall. Last October, we had a girl named, sixth grade girl named Morgan uh, start attending our club, a friend invited her. In November, Morgan's two younger sisters started attending Sparks. Along the way, we found out they were a totally unchurched family. And in December, Morgan was trying to finish up several sections so she could participate in a special party we have for TNT Clubbers, and I was listening to her sections. The last one she had to finish, the last one she had picked was a silver um, uh, award um, section. And I don't even remember what the verse was, but it had the gospel in it. So I asked her, what does that mean? And, and so she explained the gospel to me perfectly. So I, I asked her, do you believe that to be true for you? And she said, yes. I said, do you, did you trust Jesus as your Savior and, and, and understand what that means? And she says, yes, and I have. So my, my response was, when? When did you do this? And she said, um, about the second week I was here. So thank you for making starts of them. My Awana testimony involves my family. Um, one night, just standing around the, the game square, I just got to thinking, here I am. I looked across the room, and there's my daughter, Cassie, uh, serving in Puggles as the director. Um, my son-in-law, Calvin, is the game director, holding my little grandson with his little Puggle shirt on. My daughter, Beth, standing over there with her sparks, and um, my daughter Toby that helped me in TNT. And I'm like, serving in Awana. It's been such a blessing to my family and brought us closer together, closer to the Lord. And it's just a blessing, a blessing to watch my children grow in serving the Lord through Awana. So thank you very much for that opportunity. Thank you all at Awana for all that you do to make it possible to work with children every week. I've learned, just like other people have said, how important it is to share the gospel every week. I have a, st a story to share about Lily. Lily is one of those kids that you just want to paint your head off every week because she will not stay on the game square, the game circle. You just want to paint your head off. Well, Lily was not in my group, but she was in my game time group. So sad to say, one week I was at Awana and I look over on my color line and Lily's not there. Because you see, what happened the week before, Lily tragically died. Um, so Brian, at Brian Crow at the, the funeral service, some of the family members came up and told him, Lily loved Awana and because of Awana, Lily is now in heaven. So what you guys do at Awana headquarters makes an eternal difference. So don't ever forget that. Thank you so much for all that you do. We have just had the best week. Thank you. Hello. Hello, my name is Beverly, and I'm from U Harley, Georgia. I came here with thinking that I'm accompanying my husband on a trip, but I'm walking away with more than just that. I'm walking away with knowing that as we teach these children from puggies to journey, that our lives have to mean more to them beyond journey. I have walked away with so many ideas. I have walked away knowing on yesterday I wanted a Awana van, to this morning wanting a Awana bus, and I will be the driver of this bus. I have purpose, my husband knows that I am intentional about getting a bus and it's gonna have a wana all over it. So I thank you for sharing. I thank you for this week. I thank you for all that you do. And everything that you do, God has a purpose and a plan. Thank you. 
Good morning. If I was to say one thing to you to encourage you about Awana, it is that Awana makes a difference. It has made a difference in my life being a bivocational pastor. Sometimes uh, by Wednesday, I am uh, so tired and, and drained, but, but on Wednesday night, when I see these children and the smiles on their face, when I see the Jesus in them, uh, I'm encouraged to go a little bit further. Uh, it makes an impact in every child that comes on Wednesday nights. Um, on Wednesday nights, um, as a pastor in Awana, um, I'm more of a disciplinarian. Uh, they bring them to my office when they can't uh, maintain their behavior in, in their classes. And what has happened was, um, once they get to my office, I began to find out more and more about these children. I'm able to shape and mold some of their thoughts and some of their behaviors, not only at Awana, but even in school. Some of these kids, they not only can stay in the, in the classroom in Awana, but they're having trouble staying in class at school. They're getting suspended. They're getting in trouble. Um, but through Awana, I've been able to, because they come to my office, I've been able to help them and talk to them about um, my favorite thing is self-control. And I found out that that's one of the major things that, 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 can't, that, that, that can't keep them in their Awana classes. And so it, it makes a difference. And everything that you do, all the materials and all the things that you send, all the prayers that you send up, your enthusiasm, your passion, everything that you do here at Awana headquarters, I want you to know that it does make a difference. It makes a huge difference and a great impact in the lives of these children and the lives of all the leaders and the lives of all the pastors and churches. Thank you.